Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture 72. So, we have discussed about the transformation from celestial to body reference frame, uh, celestial to the uh, earth fixed reference frame. So, we will continue with that. Today, we will conclude that and uh, thereafter, we will discuss something about time and then we will come to the orbit determination. Actually, only one week is allotted to for this particular topic, which is related to reference frame and orbit determination. So, we do not have much time to cover in details. So, I will, I will slightly touch the uh, topics and then uh, uh, I will give you the references so to which you can refer if you want further details and move to the next the trajectory transfer. So, let us start. Okay, so, till now uh, in this transformation from celestial to earth fixed reference frame, where celestial refers to your inertial reference frame. So, in this uh, there are two ways uh, you can do as I have told you that I can have the transformation in the geocentric celestial reference frame, I can have transformation with respect to f k 5, this is another frame okay. and then uh, also as I told you that uh, we have also the E M A earth mean equator of 2000 or what we call as the J 2000. So, they are closely related to each other, okay, but some slight difference is there. So, at our level it does not matter, once we are looking for the astronomer, astronomers it is uh, important, but not for us. Okay. This uh, especially for the earth satellite it does not matter, but if you have the satellite tracking somewhere near Pluto or something then uh, it will, uh, uh, so differences will count. Okay, or if you are looking for the stellar distance if for the very distant star. So, at that time these things matter. So, for our case this is immaterial with respect to which you are working out okay. and this especially you call this as the J 2000. Sometimes people refer to this F k 5 as J 2000, but strictly speaking uh, the, this was the earlier one used the E M E 2000. Later on in the FK5, we have the star catalog included and then the geocentric celestial reference frame. Okay, so, uh, this loosely they are referred to the same J, J2000 or EME2000 and FK5, but GCRF it is a it falls under the category of international celestial reference system. Okay, so, it is a little different as compared to this because here it is a based on the uh, this uh, sources of uh, radiation from the stellar background. And while FK 5 mainly it involves the star catalog. So, these are the things we have discussed in the past. So, today I am going to conclude this. So, in the FK 5 reduction, inertial to uh, earth fixed, earth fixed means it is uh, rotating along with the earth. So, uh, as we have discussed and then we have one concept which is called the non rotating origin. So, we do not have time to discuss all those things. I thought of discussing, but uh, time does not permit and for uh, the non rotating origins slightly it is a given in the, uh, your uh, the David Bellado, otherwise you will have to refer to the books on astronomy. But the uh, papers are available by Guin note and uh, uh, based on that. So, mainly what I will suggest you that you look into the IERS, International Earth Rotation System or services, uh, international earth rotation this is S for services. 
i e r s so per, this provides you the related software written in fortran and also it provides you the documents related documents though not in very great details but all the necessary informations are how to uh, use those things are also available how to put the codes in serial order so that you get the final result so th these things are available so we conclude here the first was the precision we applied precision and okay so precision modeling so this we can write as the rotation due to precision and how the rotation matrix is written that we have discussed earlier that uh, a rotation about the x axis is given by 1 0 0 0 0 and if you are rotating by theta so it will be written by cos theta cos theta minus sin theta and sin theta okay so uh, here uh, if we are rotating the reference frame so we'll put here plus and this is minus and if we are rotating the vector so we'll replace this with plus and we'll replace this with minus so here in this case choose this as plus similarly the ry this we choose as uh, we will put one here in this place and then 0 0 will put here if you are rotating by theta say uh, this is rotation by theta in the uh, using the right hand rule so here this will be cos theta cos theta and in this case here this gets to minus sin theta and uh, here this will come as sin theta so this is the difference between rotation between x and y and similarly rz theta so if you are rotating by theta so about the z axis the rotation is being given so this becomes cos theta sin theta minus will not be there in the case vector rotation is there so at this place the minus sign will appear just opposite of this vector rotation by theta here this minus sign will be given if it is the matrix uh, frame rotation then here the plus sign will appear so this is with plus sign and then minus sin theta and then cos theta okay so these are the three rotations required for uh, modeling uh, any general rotation in terms of euler angles so here in this case we have the vector given in the say r f k 5 or r i t r s whatever you want to write so r f k 5 here in this case this is your vector which you can write here also in this format is a component r x r y and r z so this is the in, in the inertial frame inertial frame and then converting from the inertial frame to the earth fixed frame so this we have already done this part so just i am concluding today so first once we convert this then it comes to mean of it r mod and then the corresponding the precession rp times r fk5 where the rp we have already modeled we have written uh, earlier so for those details i am skipping because this is the concluding uh, lecture on this so r3 this was minus z r2 minus theta r2 plus theta this is r2 plus theta uh, r3 minus z r2 plus theta and then r3 minus zeta we have written okay. and this times rk rsk5 for this portion you can refer to book by valado this is the introduction to uh, astrodynamics similarly velocity here it can be written as so from fk5 we have come to the mod and velocity it will be indicated by r dot and this also because it's a snapshot 
of the axis. So, this will be written this way and the same rotation matrix will play here its role R 3 R 2 theta Okay, even in this case uh, say uh, because uh, what we have done that this is my inertial frame and then we have to convert to another frame which is also taken to be a snapshot at a particular time okay. and therefore, this rotation is not considered even if you consider. So, the, the rotation rate of all of them will be negligible it is a neglected. Okay, so, matrix multiplication I am not doing here uh, to save our time. Then the second one then we have given the nutation and nutation was similarly modeled. So, it converted from mean of debt to true of debt. This is T O D is true of debt, true of debt. So, after the precision correction we are coming to the mean of debt and after nutation correction we are coming to the true of debt, mean of debt and true of debt. So, these are the corrections that we are giving. So, here this was written as uh, if you remember we have written it as R 1 perhaps E prime or E I have used there. Uh, because of the last lecture I do not remember exactly the symbol what we have used, but here if I write simply E. So, this implies this epsilon implies this is epsilon bar which is the mean value of epsilon and uh, plus delta E. So, this we have modeled then as minus E bar minus delta E I might have written here in terms of epsilon R mean of debt to true of debt this is converted similarly it will be given by the same rotation matrix there is no change. is a snap sort of at a time or either even if you consider the rotation rate. So, these are just negligible. The third rotation it is a related to sidereal time and it is a rotation uh, related to the rotation of the earth. So, uh, the sidereal time we have not still considered and uh, uh, or either discuss about that. So, rotation of the earth it can be modeled in two ways uh, one is with respect to the distant star which we call as the sidereal day with rotation with respect to sidereal time and the another rotation with respect to the sun or the sun rotation with respect to the particular meridian of on the earth. Okay. Say here in this case if I show earth like this so uh, and here say this is your the uh, vernal equinox which we are showing at gamma as gamma. So, from here to the Greenwich meridian these things perhaps uh, we have not discussed this Greenwich meridian you might have heard about this and uh, this may be the local meridian. So, angle from here to here you have and the angle from here to here we have similarly the sun can be so, this is called the from here to here if we measure from the particular meridian towards in, in the opposite direction. So, uh, the angle from this place to this place this will call the hour angle of gamma which is the hour angle of vernal equinox h dot a this is the hour angle. 
So, our angle of vernal equinox and similarly, if we have the sun here and if I show that, so this will be the hour angle of the sun. So, we will come to that concept little later, uh, right now it is not uh, required. So, thereafter we have to model the uh, where the your the location from which on the earth you are looking uh, at the satellite. So, that location with respect to the inertial frame where it is a line. Okay. So, the first Nutation and rotation corrections, uh, correction, uh, this precision and nutation rotation uh, corrections are given, and thereafter, then we are coming to the earth rotation. Okay, so, th this is the proper rotation of the earth about its axis, but as I have mentioned earlier, that uh, this axis itself it keeps changing with respect to the figure of the earth. Figure of the earth means you have the earth here, and in this itself, the earth rotation axis it keeps changing okay it's not constant and this happens because uh, the wave the things are uh, happening here it it's a directly related to Euler's dynamical equation so Euler's dynamical equation again uh, i will have to describe uh, okay we skip all those things but it happens because of the rigid body rotation of the earth and beside this there are the plate tectonics involved that means the uh, surface of the earth it is a moving with respect to each other. So, all those things are involved. So, if figure uh, one axis fixed in the figure that means your this axis is rotating this is your spin axis, but this axis is not uh, rotating and this is called the ITRS the international terrestrial reference frame we can say ITRF. So, we convert it from what we are trying to do, we are trying to convert from the inertial reference frame to ITRF, which is fixed in the figure. This is not rotating like the spin axis of the earth, the spin axis of the earth it keeps changing with time within 30 meter uh, plus minus 30 meter uh, it is a or you can say the 30 meter into 30 meter square area about the pole it keeps shifting. Okay, so, it is a small value, but still those corrections are given if you are doing very precise work. So, uh, at that time uh, those corrections are required and those are uh, measured and uh, it is a supplied. So, international earth rotation services uh, they may uh, they keep all these records and uh, keep uploading on the website of IERS. Okay, so, the uh, rotation of the earth it can be modeled in two ways uh, sorry uh, we have already done this rotation of the uh, spin axis now we are concerned with the rotation of the earth so rotation of the earth as we have discussed that uh, we have the here say the vernal equinox gamma mean of date okay and then we got the gamma true of date after nutation correction gamma true of date. So, the angle which is measured from this place now let us join this and the, this was your true ecliptic and this we have written as delta psi. So, if we take projection on this this is 90 degree here. So, this projection then this and this angle is epsilon. So, epsilon means epsilon bar plus delta e. Okay, and th these things already I have described. So, this part becomes delta psi cos epsilon. Okay. So, delta psi cos epsilon this is called equation of equinox with certain correction which we are not going to discuss again. Equation of equation of equin so the angle which is measured from this place from the true update okay the angle which will measure and this is the true equator true equator 
true equator and this is the mean equator they are not parallel to each other. So, the angle measured along the true equator this you write as theta g a s t and this we refer as or theta a s t uh, the green which say green which apparent sidereal time and here we will write this as uh, and if we measure angle from this place so this is called g s t or g m s t we can write this as g m s t g m s t Greenwich mean drill time. So, you can see why the mean well is coming because it is being measured from gamma mean update and this is being measured from the vernal request gamma true update this is t from the true update and along the true equator. So, if we measure from this place the distance along this direction from here to uh, then we call as this as the GMST. So, G GMST and plus delta psi cos epsilon this is equal to theta G A S T and here some more corrections are added. So, the, we are skipping those terms if you want to go into the details. So, you can look into the book by Valado. So, we will be measuring distances along the true equator okay. and along the true equator distance measured from here and distance measured from the gamma T O D. So, this is the difference. So, here the other part as I am telling you that uh, the other part uh, the corrections I have not added here and simply calling this as the equation of equinox because we do not have time and uh, there are a stellar angle another definition is there which is referred to the non rotating origin again that concept uh, because I have not discussed. So, I will not go into that we do not have time to discuss all these issues, but it is a very big development uh, which has started in 1976 around and later on it has been adopted now the uh, ITRS all those things they are basically working with this non rotating origin and it is a much more comprehensive because there are the all the rotations are combined together rather than the precision nutation uh, breaking them uh, separately. So, uh, they have been combined. Okay, so, uh, this rotation is modeled by your uh, the angle measured from the true of date is uh, as I have written this is the theta g s t and uh, theta g m s t and what this s t stands for this is sidereal time ok. Again I am writing here, here this is sidereal time and there is one solar time, solar time and sidereal time these are different. So, I will come to that little later first let us wind up this. So, I am trying to recall those things and then uh, we will go into the next lecture. So, once this uh, rotation is given that means, this is the earth okay, and say this is the spin axis and so, this is the spin axis and once you have given the corrections for precision nutation and then along the true equator your rotation will take place. So, you are rotating along the true equator. Okay. So, this is the thing you are modeling. Okay you are giving the rotation and that rotation will be related to the spin of the earth. Okay. So, once we convert to the true of date, okay, so the in, in the F k 5 reduction this comes to the pseudo earth fixed what we call as the pseudo earth fix.
while this is being called as the pseudo earth fixed because your spin axis this is not fixed with respect to the figure of the earth. So, this is your pole of ITRS the international uh, celestial reference frame ITRF international terrestrial reference frame international terrestrial reference frame okay. and with respect to this your axis are shifted somewhere. Okay. So, here this is your shifted axis which is the spin axis. So, this part we are calling as the PEF. So, currently your uh, orientation of the axis. So, after giving the precision correction, nutation correction and then rotating it comes to this position. Okay, your rotated axis it is a here in this position and to this once we give the correction then we come to this ITRF. So, those corrections are also modeled. Okay. So, uh, we have R pseudo earth fixed this will be modeled as R 3 theta EST times R true update. So, apparent schedule time this is theta AST because the schedule time is measured with respect to the vernal equinox and therefore, here ST stands for the schedule time. Okay. And if it is up to Greenwich line, so this will be GAST and if we are doing it on the location for the location of the meridian of the uh, this uh, observer. So, uh, observer may be located at certain meridian. So, with respect to the say this is the center of the earth and uh, so this is the meridian of the may or the longitude of the longitude line of this this will be little better longitude of observer and this is vertically the figure axis. figure z axis which is particularly named. So, we will come to those things later on. So, uh, your vernal equinox may be directed along this direction of the true update and with respect to this then e, if it is the observer longitude then this will be written as theta g a s t. Okay. Now, uh, one thing uh, I would like to correct here uh, th this is uh, So, if, uh, first we uh, confine ourselves to PEF, let us say this is the PEF pseudo earth fixed frame. So, it has rotated from this place to this place by theta AST, which is the longitude of the observer. Okay. Let us not complicate it at this uh, current time step and uh, this is your true update vernal equinox and from there your location of the longitude of the observer perhaps we require another figure to uh, make it more clear. This is gamma true update and here you are located. So, this is your longitude okay, and longitude is being measured from the on the earth we measure it from the Greenwich meridian. So, this may be your Greenwich meridian and from there this lambda or capital lambda whatever the value you want to use the symbol. So, uh, this is the angle between your Greenwich meridian and the observer meridian okay, and your location is somewhere here in this place. So, from this place to this place remember uh, this is with respect to the true update. Okay. So, this becomes A S T and we apply before this to Greenwich apparent schedule time and if we go to this place 
up to here. Okay. So, this we write as simply as AST apparent central time because this is for your location and this is for the Greenwich location. So, for this this correction is given so that with respect to the inertial frame where you are located that is known and thereafter because the earth spin axis it is a shifting with respect to the axis of figure. So, for that another correction is required. So, that becomes the final correction. So, V E f the velocity in the V e f equal to r dot this is p e f r dot p e f this quantity will be r 3 and we have to convert it. Okay. So, we need to take the derivative of this because this is a rotating frame. So, we need to take a derivative of this. So, d by d t and r 3 theta dot a s t gamma dot true update. Uh, this is r r true update okay. so we can convert from one frame to another frame and uh, and final one this is the see so what we have uh, the total thing we are using that we are writing here r uh, in the fk 5 and then we are operating on this first by the rotation due to the precession. Okay. Then we are giving the rotation due to the nutation, then we are giving rotation due to the rotation uh, of earth and then the rotation due to the polar motion correction which still we have not done okay and this brings you to the frame r i t r s and if you differentiate this this gives you velocity in the i t r s which is r dot i t r s and here all these rotations are small. So, these are not counted only this rotation uh, these rotations are small and only the earth rotation is bigger and this uh, this is counted and this is tangible. Okay. So, here this gives you r p times r e r n times r p r f k 5 dot this is the velocity in the inertial frame and plus r p times r e dot r n r p times r f k 5. So, this is the com complete rotation. So, we are interested here if you are looking for the conversion from uh, fk 5 to itrs so this is the complete rotation sequence that we, you need to give Okay, so, for this part what we will do rather than writing here it in this way we remove this part not to confuse with the our things uh, that we are developing it is a better to just so uh, it is a better to just show this part what we have shown here in this place. This is your uh, velocity in the international terrestrial reference frame this is all these are frames 
what is the difference between the frame and the system i have already discussed in the beginning okay. so once your velocity in the inertial frame and velocity in the uh, position in the inertial frame it's a known so you can find out ve velocity in the rotating frame this is what it implies and the corresponding relationship is given by this and vice versa if you have to go in the opposite direction so accordingly you have to follow the rules okay. and this part especially other things are here just angle angular angles involved while here the derivative of this matrix is involved this is your rotation matrix whose derivative is in involved so we will have to write for that part but before this we write for the polar so polar here the precision and the polar we have uh, not differentiated so we will write this as uh, r this is only precision nutation earth rotation and then the let us say this is the polar so we will make it different from the precision so this is your polar motion polar motion and precision nutation they are different so the fourth one that we are considering this is the polar motion so now polar motion it's a model by r i t r f this is the pseudo earth fixed means your this spin axis it's a located with respect to the figure of axis this is your figure of axis i t r f reference frame okay and this is your p e f this is referring to p e f x y and z axis and this is for i t r s so with respect to this the rotation is written in terms of x and y but these are small values okay and uh, given in the angular terms okay so how much is uh, displaced from this position it's uh, done so th these things already i have discussed so here again the if we are looking for velocity so th because these rotations are almost uh, uh, rotation rates are almost negligible so therefore its uh, rates are not taken into account and just it's written as um, r dot p e f so once we give the polar correction so this is how it follows so this part is referring to r p 0 this is your r p 0 so this together it brings it in the p e f here also this together it's a bringing it into the p e f and from there then you are converting it into the figure fixed axis which is i t r f okay and modeling of all these things uh, so finally we conclude here in this place rotation of earth about the its spin axis so that we are modeling as cos theta ast as i have told you this, this is the rotation about the corresponding z axis so after nutation you are giving this rotation by theta ast as i have shown on the previous page okay about this this is your pef 
So, if you give rotation about this, so you come to the P E F frame, otherwise it was in the gamma true update. So, here this rotation, this is the A S T what we have written in terms of angle we can write this as the theta A S T. So, cos theta A S T and this is sin theta A S T minus sin theta A S T and cos theta A S T 0 0 0 0 1. So, this is your rotation matrix R E and if you differentiate this with respect to time, so you get R E dot. So, R E dot this quantity will be given by just differentiation of this matrix. So, this will be theta dot A S T and cos then becomes sin theta A S T with minus sign here and sin theta dot becomes cos theta A S T multiplied by theta dot a S T all of them this is the way of matrix differentiation and then here minus theta dot A S T cos or this tag we can remove just to keep theta dot. And then here in this place minus theta dot sin theta A S T and 0 0 0 this one differentiation of 1 this becomes 0 here in this place the rest of the things they remain as 0. So, these are the things and you just need to insert these values of course, if I go in the details it will take many lectures to discuss all the involved issues here in this and I am trying to hurry that is why uh, the uh, I am not able to put forward uh, all the related issues. So, time is not there. Okay. So, by now we have completed this week, but uh, still we have to go further uh, to complete this week lecture okay. or maybe uh, we will uh, just write one equation and then thereafter we will stop. Okay. So, in this equation what the theta dot is appearing here, this is written as 7.2921140. See, if these are written so accurately because if you are propagating for a longer time, so at that time these angles they matter. LOD is this called the length of day. And you can refer to Valado for all these details, uh, I am not going to cover and this theta dot is written in radian per second. Okay. Why I am telling that I am not going to cover? Because this will not be of immediate interest to you, until unless you get into the orbit determination area or go to the astronomy area, uh, this may not be very useful. Okay. Or either uh, once you are working, working in the mission planning area for the orbit determination, so at that time these things will be important to you. So, uh, because we do not have that much of time to discuss what exactly all these things are, so I am skipping few of the things. Okay, uh, so, we will stop here at this point, so uh, for reference you can go to Valado and look into this. Okay. So, thank you very much.